So we've talked about a lot of chord movement. The last piece of that puzzle that I'd like to get into before we get into a bunch of playing and fun stuff is that we do have minor keys also. We've talked exclusively about um, major keys so far, uh, but we have to talk about minor keys because they're a big part of jazz and a big part of music in general. Um, the basic thing I want to talk about in minor key progressions right now is just the 2-5, um, because it's a little bit different than the 2-5-1 in uh, major keys. The movement in the bass is exactly the same, but the type of chord that is above it is different because of the key it's in. So what I'd like to do, I'd like to talk about um, relative minor because that'll help us understand the chord structure of the minor 251. So I want to end up in the key of C minor. Uh, we're going to do a little backwards detective work. So C minor is the relative minor of a major key, um, not the key of A, I mean a major key, a major key. And what it is, is what I want to discover. Well, the relative minor, as I mentioned before many times, is the sixth chord. So all we have to do is figure out what, what key is C minor, the sixth chord of. A little detective work. Well, let's count down. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll start up here so you can really see it on one string. C. It takes me back to E flat. Okay? So that's our detective work. We've done a little forensic work. Um, C is the relative minor of E flat major. Okay? There it is, C minor 7. Okay? So if that's the case, and we look at the chords, the seventh chords built above each note of a, of a scale, just like the modes, if we start the E flat major scale on C, and play it through C, we'll get a sequence of chords that are basically the same chords, but they have a different order, because now we're starting from C instead of E flat. So when we're in the relative minor key, in C minor instead of E flat major, same chords, C becomes the one chord. C minor 7 becomes the one chord in this new minor key. It's not E flat major anymore. It's C minor, the relative minor. Okay, so make sure you're, you're hanging in with this concept. So we're learning about minor keys. I've told you that the relative minor uh, is the sixth chord. And we've deciphered that, for example, in C minor, you're coming from the key of E flat because the C minor is the sixth chord in that key. minor. So if I do the same E flat chords starting from C minor, the two chord is a minor 7 flat 5, which in parentheses was the 7 chord in the key of E flat, its relative major key. You follow that logic? So let's go backwards down to the 6 chord. 1 major 7, 7 minor 7 flat 5. 6 minor 7, the relative minor key. So in this new tonal center, where C minor is the center of our minor key and becomes the 1 chord, the naturally occurring 2 chord is a minor 7 flat 5 chord. It sounds really cool. Very moody. Now let's talk about the 5 of that. We're going to use our 5-7 of theory that we just spent a lot of time talking about. We're going to go back to that. And 5-7 of 6, if you uh, refresh your memory, that was you, you went up five notes from the note that's your target note and figure out, OK, I need a G. And it's got to be a dominant 7, because a 5-7 of whatever chord you're playing, in this case 6, 5-7 of 6, needs to be the dominant 7 of 6, so the chord has to be a dominant 7, right? So it's a G. So the 5 chord of C minor is G7. Sounds 
sounds great. I love that sound. So the 2 5, if we know the 2 chord is a minor 7 flat 5, and the 5 7 chord is a dominant, of course, you've got your 2 5 in a minor key. I'll just play it a few times D minor 7 flat 5, G7, C minor 7. One more time. Please grab your guitars and play this along with me. I'll play it up here this time. And one more time. And last time, slide it around a little bit. Slide it down a half step and up. It sounds cool. So there's your two five, you know, two five one in a minor key. It's two minor seven flat five. That because it's a long chord to say. It's always going to be a minor seven flat five. So uh, D minor seven flat five, G seven to C minor. Now let's get into using this. This is a really cool thing to play on. I have a play along track with uh, John Patitucci, Andy Ezrin, and Brian Dunn. It sounds great. It's a a bossa nova version of the great Kenny Dorham song, Blue Bossa. We used it once before in another uh, example. Let's use it now. It's really cool to play on. I'll play over it once, uh, giving you some examples of what I might do on it. And, uh, and then you take, go to town with it. It's a lot of fun to play on. Here we go. I'm going to be pointing out some arpeggios, some scale patterns, and I'm going to do just some freewheeling solo uh, areas too, just so you can grab some of the lines I'm doing, see how they work, play along with me, and, um, and then of course we'll give you the track to play along with as much as you'd like to. It's a good one. Here it goes. Here's Blue Bassa. Outside of the key goes to D flat. Arpeggios. I did mention while I was playing there's a modulation to another key in the middle of that song. It's just more two fives for you to play on. We get, the more practice on that we get. It modulates to uh, the key of D flat. E flat minor seven, A flat seven, D flat major seven. And hey, the more uh, practice we get playing on two fives, the better. So just you can be in C minor for almost the entire song except for those four bars. And, um, Play on this as much as you can. This is a really good thing to loop 
and plan it for hours. You can get into a lot of cool stuff on it. I want to hear what you're doing, too. Send it in. I'd love to respond to any questions or great examples that you can send in. Okay? Thank you.